90% of the most beautiful views, stunning cutscenes, fun game mechanics, wacky plots, and interesting set pieces I've ever seen aren't in video games that are trying to look as real as they can with the current modern technology. Look, I get it. I understand that the premise of realistic graphics sells really well, but it's resulted in a lot of games showing us the exact same visuals over and over and over and over and over and over and over. What was once impressive is now boring. Before I continue this rant, keep in mind that this applies to some of my top games. Lucky for me, the little guy, known as indie developers, and the occasional big man, aka triple A developers, got us with the artsy fartsy stuff that I like, so I can use their games as an example of why realistic games are not, um, as epic. God, I am so fucking excited for this video. It has been in the works since my first real video, and has been recorded then scrapped because it wasn't turning out how I wanted four times. But I finally think I got it. So let's dive in, shall we? Fact. Realistic graphics don't age well. Or at least not as well as the more stylistic approaches. Look at games that when they were released, they were revolutionary for their time. Now they don't look that great. Don't get me wrong, I love the Half-Life series. And while I don't think Half-Life 2 has aged incredibly poorly in its visuals and its animation is still oddly charming, it hasn't aged as well as this Paper Mario game which came out the exact same year. Now, I know, I know, that is a super weird comparison. They aren't similar in any way besides the year they were released. But it shows exactly what I'm talking about. Because while Half-Life 2 is noticeably an older game, if I up the resolution on Paper Mario, it practically hasn't aged. Let's do a similar comparison, but with two games in the same genre this time, so the comparison makes a little more sense. Team Fortress 2. This game is a first person shooter that came out in 2007. And so did Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. If we're being honest, like brutally honest, this kinda looks like ass in comparison. Do you get it now? You don't? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you were brain dead. I'll give you one more example with the most blatant difference so that your little pea brain can comprehend that realistic graphics are actually kinda lame. Heart of Darkness will never be an old looking game, even though it was released in 1998. That's the same year Half-Life Resident Evil 2, and the original Metal Gear Solid was released. All these games are brilliant, but visually, they look ancient. Look at Gordon Freeman. Look at his gross little head. They just don't hold up to today's standards. But the visuals and animation in Heart of Darkness still looks amazing to this day. Do you want to play a game? Presented in front of you is a game called Hop, and a game called Death's Door. Their visuals and gameplay are very similar, but one is five years old, while the other is only one year. You have five seconds to guess which one is older. If you fail to guess correctly, you have to click the subscribe button. Time is up. 
If you guessed Death's Door as a five-year-old game, you are incorrect. Good try, though, stupid. Congratulations! You are now grateful to be subscribed! Ugh, so dumb. If you pick an interesting art style that you can pull off with the budget, technology, or skill you possess, it practically won't age. Stylized games just age better, and it's because they don't need the highest res textures, or RTX, or displacement whatever the fuck, or any of that other fancy nonsense to look good. Because we don't have any direct comparisons of what they should look like. We all know what real life looks like. We see it every second our beady little eyes are open. So when something doesn't look right in a video game or movie with CGI that's trying to imitate what we constantly see, but something is wrong, we notice it. Even if we aren't exactly sure what's wrong. But if the game or movie were to take place in, I don't know, something like a, a cartoony oil painting where you play as a furry, no one would care about any missing reflections. Because shadows, or reflections, or lights, or textures can do whatever they fucking want in a painting. Bitch, character break. Look at my setup. I'm- I'm purple! And I'm living on Pluto. My cat talks? And I can do that. I can do all those things. Because art doesn't have any rules. Reality does, though. And those rules don't just apply to the reflections of a coffee pot. They apply to physics, water physics, item physics, ragdolls, etc. And while we are getting better, the same as what I just mentioned about the painting still applies. Does anyone remember the movie Gemini Man starring Will Smith and Will Smith? I don't really either. But the one thing I do remember is that there was something really wrong with the bikes in that movie. Bikes. Name out your fucking mouth! I'm sorry, Will. I just can't do that. This movie is is too just terrible and fun to shit on. Oh, and I describe your marriage in a very similar way. In reality, we have a lot of shit moving around underneath our face skin. Our pores stretch, our skin folds and wrinkles, some parts of us lights come through. Our skin changes color in different environments. And when a character is missing these features, our brain can tell that something is off. But cartoony games are less likely to have this issue. In cartoons, characters' jaws can literally drop to the floor, and their eyes can bulge out of their head. Character animations and movements don't have to be limited to the restrictions of reality. Their movements can be as fast or as slow as possible. Their expressions can be exaggerated, and the same applies for their props, or literally anything else around them. And while motion capture has gone a long way in making animations look more real, there is still something off, something gives that uncanny valley effect, when you look at a realistic character in a video game. Apparently, I'm in the minority here. Recently, Face Punch Studios, the people who made Gary's Mod and Rust, have been working on a new sandbox style game called, well, Sandbox. And this game looks fantastic. I am so excited to get my hands on this game. But I've been seeing a lot of complaints online about the character design. Because while Gary's mod had the realistic Half-Life models, they have this guy. Look at him, he's, oh, he's, he's even got a name, his name's Terry. Now if you can't tell, I like Terry. I mean, how could you not? He looks so polite. This model change gives the game a more lighthearted, goofy feeling, which fits the game much better than the eerie feeling Gary's Mod had, where every map was weirdly unsettling. But the general consensus around Sandbox isn't in Terry's favor. The vast majority of the community seems to want realistic models, like Gary's Mod, which is just so fucking boring. I don't play Rust, but if Rust looked like, I don't know, Firewatch, 
I would have played that game non-stop. But instead, Rust is trying to be realistic, which has resulted in it being... And I mean this in the kindest way possible, the nicest, the politest way. Um, absolutely gut-wrenchingly hideous. It makes sense why movies do it, why movies try to look so real. Because most of the time, movies are filming real people in somewhat real set pieces. You don't have to make a single 3D model to make a movie. But in games, everything is a digital asset. 3D models are so common. So why are we constantly limiting ourselves like this? In an ideal world, Blizzard employees would stop sexually harassing women and instead get the creative juices flowing, and maybe create some visually stunning game. But we already talked about the Overwatch 2 beta. And that's definitely not going to happen. And I don't picture any other major AAA companies stopping trying to flex their realistic graphics either. I mean, it sells. But just know that I'm not going to remember any of the locations in whatever the next BS open world game Bethesda shits out is. But I will always remember places like Marissa's Stage in Hollow Knight, or the Glowing Mountain in Breath of the Wild. And no game with realistic graphics will ever be more visually interesting than the entirety of Psychonauts 1 and 2. My point is, real life kinda sucks. But video games don't have to. I'm re recording for a video right now, so you're... Oh, hello. Hello. Fuck him, I'm part of the video now. Yep. Yeah.